Hello and welcome to Opening the Curtain, an interview series of artists in conversation with students. My name is Caitlin Beard and I'm sophomore at Redwood High School. Today I'm interviewing Kikau Alvaro, Assistant Professor of Musical Theater at Virginia Commonwealth University and Associate Artistic Director of Virginia Repertory Theater. So hi Kika, how are you? Hi Caitlin, so nice to meet you. I am so well. Nice to meet you too, good. I'm so excited to get to talk to you today. Um, so first of all, can you just tell everyone um, what it is you do for a living and what your job entails? Yeah, it's a lot of big words, but really it comes <laughs> down to, I know it's like, as you were doing the introduction, I was thinking that's a lot of words, um, <laughs> but it comes down to, uh, you know, I'm an educator, I'm a director, I'm a choreographer. And then um, really, I also have producing as well uh, under that under that umbrella. Uh, but I, I work at Virginia Commonwealth University where I teach primarily musical theater, um, musical theater performance, musical theater history. And then I have a position at the um, regional theater nearby, uh, Virginia Repertory Theater, where I am the associate artistic director. So that's where the producing and the directing kind of come into play. Oh, wow. That's a lot. And how did you get, like, what was kind of the starting point to all those different careers in one? Oh, man. I love that question. Um, honestly, I was, uh, the dream of this began exactly where you are, right? Like, I was in high school, um, and I just wanted to create, and I wanted to um, direct, and I wanted to perform. Um, and for me, my trajectory began as a performer, and I just started looking at the directors that I was working with and um, just thinking, wow, I really want to do that. Uh, so I began choreographing and assistant choreographing, uh, assistant choreographers, and uh, just sort of made my way through uh, the uh, creative life, um, and then went to get my master's in musical theater, and that led me to education. So sort of, it's something that I teach my students all the time. There's really no one way to get to this point, um, but it certainly is uh, amazing to be here because it truly is just a lifelong dream to be doing everything that I'm doing right now. Wow, that's really cool. Did you do a lot of community theater as a kid? Is that kind of how you got into it? I did. You know, um, I did. Uh, so I am originally from the Bay Area, originally born and raised in San Jose. And there is a sweet little community center, Kirk Community Center, where uh, it was basically was like a cafeteria that you know you turn that side of the cafeteria to a castle and turn it into beauty and the beast and so i came from a place where um it was pretty scrappy it was pretty you know you needed to be creative there literally was nothing and we had to make something out of that and mm -hmm. i don't think much has changed um in terms of my aesthetic it's like i still love to create from a place of like nothing like what what's the least amount of things that i could have in a room so that we can um kind of bring magic from that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I am an interpretive artist as a director and choreographer, so I don't write uh, my own plays. I don't write music or songs. So um, there is a, a an amazing roadmap that has been left for you that, that I feel um, so lucky and grateful to be able to interpret. Um, and then you also are a an aspiring director as well is that you have interest in directing you have interest in performing what are you yeah, where, where are you exactly sure like what area in the arts i hope to work in but i definitely would love to do something related to that in the future i'm pretty open like in any capacity i could be involved in the arts like i think that sounds so great yeah i saw one production of ragtime um i think about two years ago in my um community and i was blown away like the the set like the themes that it was communicating and all the like sensitive racial topics and topics of justice like i was so deeply moved by that and i think that was kind of like a turning point for me where i was like i want to be involved in this like i want to be able to like touch people the way i was touched that one time you know yeah oh so. yeah it's it's been um I, I really do call it a charmed life like you know mm -hmm. I, I i'm so lucky to be working like actually working getting paid to do what i do 
but really it's just so much fun. Like it's so much mm -hmm. fun and it can be super important. So like um, with this pause with, with COVID and with these other things, um, there has been a real sort of reflection on, on theater, right? So many aspects of theater have just been unplugged. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, it's just interesting that you're saying this because I so completely agree and believe that um, the stories that we tell mean something and can mean something to one person in the audience can mm -hmm. mean something to everyone in the audience. So, uh, you know, it's, it's important what we do. And are you teaching in person right now or is it still online? Well, we do a combination of things like um, primarily this last year has been all Zoom, um, but I worked on a filmed version of my production of Spring Awakening. Um, so, and that itself had its own process that went from what we call 1.0, which was a real live sort of about to go on stage pandemic hit. We flipped it to what we call 2.0 which was the filmed version. So it just uh, had its own had its own process, but did have to have in-person um, rehearsals and in-person filming. Okay, so it was filmed yeah. in person and was it kind of like in the style of a, of a movie or was it more like on a stage? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. It was more of a movie. So okay. um, just the way that we filmed it, we had to break it down into a whole like shooting schedule and get get specific close-ups mm -hmm. um and we didn't we didn't want to film it like an archival production because um it was uh, maybe too dangerous potentially for people to be so close to each other yeah. um so we found that by filming it in a movie format that we were able to to sort of switch perspectives and tell a story um i had never worked on a film ever in my life so it was interesting yeah. for me to see um something translate from the stage to the film. What are a couple of things you like? Like, what what's something that you're grateful about with the merging of education and theater? I don't know if that made sense. Oh my gosh! No, it totally makes sense. Okay. Um, I actually, people often say like, "Wow, I can't believe you work in these two worlds. That must be so mm -hmm. hard to keep them separate." And the truth is, I treat them like one job. Like when I'm working on a regional production somewhere, I, I find myself teaching, right? And when I'm working with my students, I am holding them to the standards that I would if I would be in a professional rehearsal. So just right there, there is like a specific um, approach, I think, that that I, I look at both spaces. Um, but But actually, practically, I'm able to um, bring artists that come as guests to Virginia Repertory Theater and bring them literally to classes with me. So your yeah. connections like in the regional world have helped a lot of your students? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. And, really and, cool. and it's a great step for them, right? Because they get to um, remain either in their dorms or at home and then also gain this experience while they're um, working or while they're uh, going through their educations. Um, this is kind of an entirely different uh, direction, but yeah, go for it. what would you say is the hardest part of your job? <laughs> you, there is a lot of um, guessing sometimes in the job. Um, if I'm selecting a season, let's say, there's a lot of guessing that comes with, okay, I'm, I'm hoping that people will enjoy this show during the holidays. And right. you just don't really know. So you have to do as much research as possible. You have to really understand your audience. Um, and then you also just have to go for it. So that's, that's, I don't know. I just, I feel like that's good advice. If you are interested in being a director, it's like yeah. both being totally decisive and also completely flexible to go with the flow. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Um, this is kind of a question related to kind of college, like as I'm, nearing those years um Love it. so i'm hoping to you know pursue some sort of career in the arts but i'm not sure whether i'm willing to like commit an entire major to that or not mm -hmm. do you think that there's a way to get involved in theater at a college without majoring in it oh sure yeah i do i think um my advice to you is to do lots of research which i'm sure you will be doing um and even if you are let's say visiting a school and and walking through um 
the English department or whatever, um, mm -hmm. make an appointment and really meet with uh, people that are in the theater department and get a tour of that space and actually really ask them the question, like, what is the percentage of students that you cast outside of the department? Um, mm -hmm. And also do the kind of research like, uh, I know that some programs, our program in particular, offers a musical theater minor. We offer a like theater minor. So people can be in so many different uh, other spaces and and also have a very specific focus when it comes to theater and musical theater. So okay. it's just a matter of asking about it and like and going for it, you know. And then I guess just like as COVID's affected theater, do you see it continuing differently than it has before COVID? Just because I see it being changed every day as COVID progresses, but obviously like the pandemic's coming to an end. Do you think theater will come out of COVID in a different form? I, I think so. I think that we have to change. We need to learn from this time. Um, I had and held several Zoom rehearsals. Um, there have been been production meetings. There have been even auditions that I've run over Zoom. And so I, I can imagine just in a space a few years from now where we're interested in seeing somebody's um, audition or callback and saying, hey, rather than getting on a plane, can we just meet real quick and kind of have a conversation? Like there is a world where this technology, I think, will be something that we bring with us. Um, but I think um, I think everything needs to change when we're looking at COVID and and just health in general, the healthcare system. Um, when we're looking at um, racial justice, when we're looking at um, all of these little pockets, it's like uh, that's what makes theater and musical theater so exciting and alive to me. Is that it has to change, it has to evolve. Um, and um, so the, the short answer is, once again, I can't predict the future, but like, mm -hmm. it's got to change. Things have to change. Yeah. And, um, and also, for the better, I think the things that we learned during COVID will be bringing with us. Have you had a moment of like burnout ever in your career or just kind of like hitting a wall? Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I fully believe in the need to recharge. Um, the need to just stop. Last year at this time, I was slated to work on three separate projects in different states. Um, wow. One of them was California. And, and so it was the kind of thing where I was in a rehearsal process and then was about to get on a plane to just set the choreography for a production of Kinky Boots. And then I was gonna fly back and do a pre-production process on a production of Head Over Heels. And I just, I, the world was spinning and for me. So, so this is where, when the pandemic hit, all of those projects were taken away. And initially I thought, wow, this is a real answer. Like I need to just sit back and relax and like stop and listen and breathe and meditate. Um, and so I was thankful for that. And since that, I, I now can really kind of pick and choose. And once again, even give myself a break and just say, hey, you know what, I'm only going to work on one show mm -hmm. um, or work on two shows or whatever at the same time versus mm -hmm. trying to fit it all in. I guess just what's an important lesson you've learned from all your work so far? I did choreography for a production of Title of Show at um, Theater Works a few years back with Meredith McDonough as the director. And she also taught me this lesson, which is um, to... to to just dream big, to like go for it. Like, what is that thing in your head? Be, allow yourself to think about it and to bring that forward to the table. And there will be a reaction to it, right? Sometimes there's a budget that's gonna be like, nope, we can't do that. Or there's going to be like, great, that's, that's excellent, we'll do it. Or there's gonna be a, we can't do that, but what about this? Mm -hmm. um, so I just, it's like, dream big, ask for the weirdest things. Um, and it's possible that it will spark or inspire someone else in the room to be like, yes, let's do that. Obviously a big part of theater is rejection. And have you ever had issues with rejection, you know, like affecting you too much or something like that? Oh my gosh, I, that is such a great question. Um, really, truly it is. 
uh, because I see rejection all the time. Um, we just went through a casting process of a production of James and the Giant Peach that we're working on. And lots of students who were not cast, it's a fairly small group. Um, and it comes down to really pointing out that the requirement for the roles are very specific. We need you to sing this high or this low and yeah. to not take it personally and to look at this rejection really as an opportunity um, to, to try something new, to have time off, right? Young people think, oh, I need to just be in all the things all the time. And in reality, the most successful performers that I know are ones that like really did take breaks, that, did, that didn't get cast in things and then went in and started taking a lot of dance classes and just became better dancers. So mm -hmm. um, from that point of view, I've experienced rejection. And then even myself, like part of uh, the difficulties of my interest in becoming a performer, I often was tokenized in a production or, or was not cast because um, I was not any race, right? I am half Hawaiian, half Filipino, and on stage, I look like a lot of mil a lot of different things, but just sort of didn't feel seen. Um, and so that re rejection all actually got me here because it made me want to build a, a world and to to make a space for people that were like me um, mm -hmm. interested in that. So it's like there is rejection all over the place, and I, I think the biggest thing is to breathe through it, and that. Um, and that there really is something amazing on the other side. There's something amazing that is meant for you mm -hmm. and that, that this won't be the last opportunity for you to do whatever it is you're trying to do. Yeah, well, thank you so much. And thank you so much you're for so your time. Welcome. Caitlin, have... you're amazing. Thank you, you're amazing. I've had so <laughs> much fun talking to you. I've learned so much in the last 15 minutes. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I hope everyone at home enjoyed tuning in and yeah, thank you so much for your time again. Thank you for tuning in to Opening the Curtain, Artists in Conversation with Students, a collaboration between TheaterWorks Silicon Valley and Palo Alto Unified School District as part of the Kennedy Center Partners in Education program. We will continue to explore different careers available in the performing arts throughout the school year. Please join us for the next set of videos in the series at the end of each month at theaterworks.org.